Welcome to From His Heart with Pastor Jeff Shreve, who's in a new series today called Revelation, the Triumph of the Lamb. Today, we'll learn about the great white throne judgment that'll take place as the unrighteous dead will be resurrected to stand trial before the Lord. Join us for this eye-opening lesson called The Final Judgment. You know, as it relates to judgment, in the very first book of the Bible, Abraham asks God this question, shall not the judge of all the earth deal justly? It was kind of a rhetorical question because obviously God, the righteous God, the holy God, he is going to deal justly. He is the judge of all the earth. And there is coming a day where every person will face the Lord and give account of his life, of her life, and that is coming at the end of the book of the Revelation. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, and I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne. And books were open, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. And death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Such a terrifying passage of Scripture that we read here. Now, my friend Ed Heinsohn, who is known for uh, his studies in the Second Coming in the book of the Revelation and prophetic literature, he says, Revelation wasn't given to scare us. It was given to prepare us. But here's the thing. If you're not prepared, Revelation is very frightening. And the most frightening part of the whole book of the Revelation are the verses I just read. Revelation 20, 11 through 15, because that speaks of the final judgment. Unsaved man's last day in God's court. It's a terrifying thing to think, but it's one of the clear teachings in Scripture, the great white throne judgment. So here's our question. What happens at the final judgment. What happens at the great white throne? Four events take place that we just read about. First event, the judge will take his seat upon the great white throne. The great white throne is different from the throne that God sits on now because the throne God sits on now We are called, Hebrews chapter 4, to come boldly before the throne of grace that we may receive mercy to find grace to help in time of need. God sits on a throne of grace for his children. But on that day, on the final judgment, he sits on a great white throne. Great speaks of its power and authority. White speaks of its purity And throne speaks of its supremacy and its finality. This is the supreme court of the universe. And the Lord is seated. The judge takes his seat. And the scripture says in verse 11 that from his presence, literally from his face, earth and heaven fled away, but no place was found for them. 
This is a terrifying situation, and earth and heaven don't want to be there. They want to flee from the presence of the Lord. Why? Because he's not sitting on the throne of grace. He's sitting on the great white throne of judgment. And earth and heaven say, I got to get out of here, but there's nowhere to run, and there's nowhere to hide. It's a terrifying thing. The judge is terrifying in holiness and majesty. You say, well, who is this judge on the throne? The judge on the throne is the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we, we get the idea that, well, uh, the, the one that sits on the throne, that's, that's God the Father. He's sitting on the throne. But Jesus made it clear in John chapter 5. He said that for not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son in order that all may honor the Son even as they honor the Father. All judgment is with the Son. When Paul preached in Acts chapter 17 that day to the Athenians, preached on Mars Hill, he said to them, God is declaring now that all men everywhere should repent because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead. The judge will take his seat upon the great white throne Second event, the unrighteous dead will be resurrected to stand trial. And I saw the dead, John says, the great and the small, standing before the throne. The dead are there resurrected. Now, this is the second resurrection. Remember what we said? Blessed and holy is the person who has part of the first resurrection because for them the second death holds no power. But this is the second resurrection. It's all the unbelievers for all, from all the ages who are resurrected right now. The people that were there in the days of Adam and the people that rebelled against Jesus at the, in the millennial kingdom when they teamed up with the devil, they're all going to be there. And all the people in between... He said, I saw the great and the small standing before the throne. Now, you can't hold court if the judge is dead. But the judge isn't dead. The judge is alive. He was raised up three days after his crucifixion. And you can't hold court if the defendant is dead. But he raises up all the defendants. The, the sea gave up the dead which were in them. Death and hell gave up the dead which were in them. Death and Hades. Death has the body. Hades has the soul. They come together in a resurrection, and they face the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when it says in verse 12, I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, I want you to think about the great and the small. Because that covers everything, every unsaved person. The, the great unsaved people, the very uh, smallest, uh, the people that we don't know, the ones we've heard of, the ones we haven't heard of, all throughout history. And I think we can put those people in four basic categories. Category number one, the bad people. The bad people are going to be there. You know, who's there at the, who stands there at the great white throne? Bad people. Now, we, uh, you know, when we talk about bad people, we're all bad people. We're all sinners before the Lord. But the ones that we think are bad, the people like in the Bible, Cain, who killed his brother Abel, the people like Herod, who wiped out, tried to kill Christ when he was a baby, wiped out all the babies in Bethlehem two years old and under. We think about Pilate. We think about uh, Hitler, we think about Nero, we think about all these people that are the quote-unquote bad people. Man, they've killed so many people. They're, they're bad people. And so I guess if there's going to be a hell, if there's going to be a judgment, I guess the bad people should be, be there. Well, the bad people are going to be there. But not only the bad people, you're going to have the good people. And the good people are in quotes, quote-unquote good people, because there are no good people. Remember when the rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, good teacher, uh, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? There is no one good except God alone. Do you understand that I am God alone? No one good except God. There's none righteous, not even one. But these are the people who think they are good. They are the self-righteous people. And they think that 
their goodness should get them into heaven. You know who we'd put in that category? We'd put Caiaphas. We'd put Annas. We'd put the Pharisees. Jesus told a story in Luke chapter 18 about uh, people, Pharisees mainly, religious leaders who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. He said the parable about the two men that went up to pray. And the Pharisee prayed thus to himself, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like other people. I mean, I tithe uh, on all that I have. I fast twice a week. I do all these good works. I'm not like this, this rotten tax collector over here. I'm somebody. That guy will be there at the great white throne. Bad people, good people. How about this category? The procrastinating people. They'll be there. The procrastinators are the ones who hear the gospel and they, they're convicted by the Holy Spirit and they know they need to respond, but they don't respond. And they say, well, you know, I need to do that, but I'm busy right now. I got a lot of things going on, so I'm going to do that later. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'll do that next week. I'll do that after I get married, because right now, I mean, it's, it's time to sow my wild oats. I mean, here I am. I'm, I'm just out of high school, and I'm just going to have fun and just live it up. But when I get through college, when I get married, that's when I'm going to settle down. That's when I'm going to give my life to Christ. And they're banking on tomorrow. Some of you are here, and you've never made a decision for Christ, and you're thinking later, tomorrow, some other time. But this might be the last time that you have. The procrastinator will be there, and then lastly, the deceived person. He'll be there. A whole bunch of deceived people will be there. What do you mean deceived people? These are people that thought, hey, I, I think I'm in. I think I'm part of the family of God because I, I joined the church. I was baptized when I was two weeks old or maybe when I was eight years old or maybe when I was 12 years old or whatever. And, uh, you know, my parents always took me to church. I'm on the cradle roll, and, and that's got to be worth something, you know, and I, I think I'm okay. I talked to a friend this week, and he was... Uh, talking about uh, a testimony, and his testimony had, well, I did a lot of bad things, and then I started going to church, and now I'm starting to do good things, and it was like, okay, well, when did you meet Christ? Because that's the thing that you need to talk about in your testimony. Oh, well, I, you know, it's just I was doing bad things, and now I'm not doing bad things. Yeah, well, when did you receive Christ as your Savior and Lord? When did you say, I do to him? When did you turn from sin and embrace the Savior? When did that happen? See, because Jesus said, unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You can't see it. You can't enter it. You must be born again. So the judge takes his seat. The unrighteous dead will be resurrected to stand trial. And then thirdly, the books will be opened. And books were opened. And another book was opened which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. The books are open. You say, what, 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 in the, what kind of books? The books of all your sins. Did you know that God keeps a record of every person's sins? You say, I didn't know that. Well, you know, in the day and age in which we live, you can't do much of anything without there being some kind of video camera on you. We watch football on Saturdays, maybe on Sundays. And you see, if you do something on the sideline, somebody's got a camera. Somebody will pick it up. You, you do something embarrassing, it's going to be there. Hey, the eyes of the Lord are in every place watching the evil and the good. There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And God has his recording angels, and they're writing everything down. Hey, these folks are going to find out just how wicked they truly are at the great white throne. But the sad part is then it's too late. So you find out at the great white throne just how sinful you are. And the things you thought you did so good, you're going to find out that I have millions of speeding tickets. And I stand before the God who is perfect and holy. I'm in serious trouble. And it's irreversible trouble when it's at the great white throne. Why? Because Jesus doesn't sit on a throne of grace like he does now. In that day, he'll sit on a throne of judgment. 
And there's no mercy on this throne. There's no grace on this throne. There's no forgiveness on this throne. There's no salvation on this throne. There's just judgment. And every unsaved person will be judged with perfect justice. Here's what people say. They say, whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute, time out. What about the person who never heard? I mean, what are they going to do? This, this person never heard about Jesus. How is Jesus going to judge them? He will judge them with perfect justice. That's how he'll do it. Romans chapter 1 tells us that no one is excused. You can't come to the great white throne and say, well, Lord, I'm innocent because of ignorance. I never knew. No, you did know. God gave two voices. He gives two voices to every person, the voice of conscience and the voice of creation. That which is known as, uh, about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. He gave them a conscience. And then he gives them creation. The eternal attributes of God have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. And God will judge this way. What did you do with the light that you had? Hell's not going to be the same for everybody. It has to do not only with sin committed, but with light rejected. What did you do with the light that I gave you? Did you respond to that light? Or did you sin against that light? This is what Jesus said in Luke chapter 12. And that slave who knew his master's will and did not get ready for it or act in accord with his will shall receive many lashes. But the one who did not know it and committed deeds worthy of a flogging will receive but few. And from everyone who has been given much shall much be required. And to whom they entrusted much of him they will ask all the more. Not everybody gets the same. It has to do with what did you know? What kind of light were you given? And the Lord will judge you. Speaking of the unsaved dead, he'll judge every person according to their sins, according to the light that they had. You know, it's dangerous to come to church. It's dangerous. Now, it's a good thing to come to church, but here's the thing. If you come to church and you don't respond to the gospel, all you do is amass judgment for yourself. Some people who have been in church for years and years and years and years and years, decades and decades and decades and decades, and heard about the cross and heard about the empty tomb and heard about salvation, and they never did anything about it. They had tons of light, and they sinned against tons of light. To whom much has been given shall much also be required. Hey, you listen to truth, you hear truth, and you reject truth. Let me tell you, hell's hottest flame, I believe, will be for a man named Judas, who was there with Jesus for three and a half years, heard all the sermons, saw all the miracles, was rubbed shoulder, rubbing shoulders with the sinless Son of God and rejected him. And betrayed him. He's going to be there at the great white throne. And he's going to pay for sins committed and light rejected. Event number four. Not only will the books be opened, but then the judgment will fall. And death and Hades, verse 14, were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's one's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Judgment comes. The judge wraps his gavel, guilty as charged. The second death is eternal fire. We call it hell. Jesus called it hell. He compared it to Gehenna, the place in Jerusalem, southwest of the city, where they would burn the garbage because that was a good place because it was full of putrefaction and the fire never went out. It was just constant. And it, that place was full of worms and maggots that would eat on the refuse. And that's the picture that he gives, where the fire is not quenched, and the worm dies not. That is hell, and it's eternal. Some people don't like, many people don't like, many theologians don't like the idea that hell would last forever, but it does. There's eternal life that lasts forever. There's eternal hell that lasts forever. It says in verse 10, 
And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Black print on white paper. It's right there. The beast is a human being. Energized, he was energized by Satan, but he's a human being. The false prophet, a human being. They're in hell for a thousand years. They're still there at the end of the thousand years. They're being tormented day and night forever and ever. Hell is a forever place. The second death is eternal fire. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25, then he will also say to those on his left, when he does the sheep and goats judgment, he says to the goats on his left, depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. God didn't prepare hell for people. He prepared it for the devil and his angels. But if you walk in the footsteps of the devil and his angels, you're going to end up there too. You say, this is a horrible passage of Scripture. It's terrifying. It's awful. But did you see what it says? And death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. It says books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And you say, wait a minute, time out. If this is the second resurrection, and all these people are unsaved that are raised up to face the Lord, then why, their names aren't in the book of life. Why in the world does the Lord open up the book of life? Because the book of life has a place for every person. And I believe that the Lord at the great white throne judgment shows every single unsaved person. You see here, you see that slot here? That was a slot for your name because I died for you. I shed my blood for you. I purchased your salvation and you said no. You said, Lord, not your will, but mine be done. And now I say to you, not my will, but yours be done. And the Lord will say, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. That's not what he wants. He wants you to be saved. Jesus, the desire of his heart is for people to come to know him. He doesn't want any, he's not willing for any to, be, any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But he gives you the choice. What will you do with Jesus? Neutral you cannot be. One day your soul will be asking, what will he do with me? You know how to escape the second death? Get your name in the Lamb's book of life. You know how to get your name in the Lamb's book of life? Receive Christ as Savior and Lord. Turn from sin and turn to the Savior. Listen, have you responded? to the Lord's invitation. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Have you responded to him? Have you cried out with blind Bartimaeus? Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Save me. Jesus saved blind Bartimaeus. And Jesus saved me when I was 17 years old. Because I understood, man, I'm not good. I'm a sinner, and I'm lost, and I need a Savior. And Jesus, would you save me? And he did. And he changed my life. And he'll do that for anybody who will come to him in repentance and faith. Our friend, the Lord is coming soon. And now is the time, if you're not ready, to get yourself ready. Simply pray this prayer from your heart. Lord Jesus, I need you. I know that I'm a sinner and I'm lost and I can't save myself. But Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, that you rose again from the dead and that you are Lord of all. And right now, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. I surrender all to you. My friend, if you'll pray that kind of prayer and mean it, the Lord will come in and your life will never be the same. I would love to hear from you, to know that you're watching, to know that God is using this broadcast to make a difference in your life, to know that you just prayed that prayer with me to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. Please take the time to call that toll-free number on your screen. Write me, email me, let me know what's going on and how we can pray for you. 
you really are important to God and you're important to us and we're here for you. Today's message, The Final Judgment, is from Pastor Jeff Shreve's new 11-message series, Revelation, The Triumph of the Lamb. The individual message and series are available in multiple formats when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. Hey, let's face it. The book of Revelation can be intimidating. It's full of prophecy and symbolism, tribulation, warning, and woe. But it's also full of hope and encouragement because the king is coming for his own and he will rule one day forever in Jerusalem. Hey, do you have questions about the rapture, the tribulation period, the Antichrist, Armageddon, heaven, and more? In my new 11-message series, Revelation, The Triumph of the Lamb, We'll take an in-depth look at these topics, explaining the timeline of coming events. Now, this series is sure to encourage believers and send a strong wake-up call to those who have yet to receive Christ as Savior and Lord. This timely series, along with my booklet, How Near is the End, are my thank you gifts to you this month for your support of $50 or more to From His Heart Ministries. They'll come in the format of your choice, so request yours when you make your gift today. Thanks for your support of From His Heart. Remember, the King is coming soon, so be watchful and be ready for His victorious return. To get your copy of this new series, Revelation, The Triumph of the Lamb, and the timely booklet, How Near is the End, you can make your gift when you call 877-777-6171 or go online to fromhisheart.org. And thank you for supporting From His Heart. And thank you for watching From His Heart today, the viewer-supported broadcast ministry of Dr. Jeff Shreve, who believes that no matter how badly you may have messed up in life, God still loves you and He has a wonderful plan for your life. Find out more about that plan. Go to fromhisheart.org. Real truth, real love.